Welcome everyone to the Open eWebinar. Today is June 18th, 2013. My name is Todd Maxwell and today's topic is going to be about DSS v7 with the SMB user audit. Uh, this was quite in demand especially for the police departments and we'll further explain that. Basically what we're doing is auditing uh, the files in for SMB uh, in the NAS shares. So what we're going to be going over is installing the user audit with the small update. And this is the update that we have uh, that you can obtain from our engineers. Uh, you can also email at pre-sales at open-e.com to be able to get this small update, which is 7130-dss-v7 underscore SMB underscore users underscore audit. And what we're going to be doing is setting up the NAS volume and SMB share and then creating the uh, SMB audit log share. And then we're going to enable the logging in the NAS settings and I'll show you how to do that. And then of course accessing the log file and showing you different areas of the log file, that how it's being recorded and how fast it can grow. Uh, so there is some maintenance that has to be done with that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up right now the DSS v7. So I'm working with the latest version. By the way, the latest version is the last build is 7637, which is considered up 10. Now we do see that this up 170, 7030, 130 is in here. And we're going to show you how to do the update first before we move forward. So if we go to maintenance software update, you want to be able to upload the small update. It's a very small file. Most of the small updates that OpenE does provide are small. There are some large ones for the RAID controllers, especially for the Adaptic and a few others. But here, this one's very small. As you can see, the size of this file is 364K. So uh, it's very, very small and uploads real fast. I've already uploaded it. It only takes a few seconds. And then what's going to ask you is to reboot the system because you do need to reboot it after you've done the small update. And most of your updates do require a reboot. So bear that in mind. I want you to take a look at where my mouse is located at in the system software update section underneath the action bar. Now here, if you have uh, the small update and you reboot, you want to verify that the small update has been applied. It's very simple. And all you have to do is just click on the down arrow key. So let's go ahead and do that. And here you'll see a lot of the information, especially about the release notes, what's new, what's being tested, and known issues. Uh, you always It's a good practice to read these. I know a lot of engineers don't have time, but they do contain information that might be vital to your production environment. All right, now if you look here down the bottom, you see small updates. And here I have a very uh, another large update uh, for volume replication to increase megabytes. But here you'll notice that I just added the user's audit for uh, small message server blocks. So here the SMB is loaded. And now what we're going to need to do is create a NAS volume. So this is very simple. If we just go to configuration, volume manager, volume groups, and on the left side, if you've already created your volume group, we're here denoted by the unit. So here my unit is S001. And you can have many units, by the way. Uh, and it, the, me, the first unit I have here is volume group 00. You can rename these. We do get requests for that. But you have to do that while you're creating your unit. All right, now we're loading up the volume manager. If we scroll down, we will be able to create a NAS volume. It's very simple. You just select a new NAS volume. Of course, you can create other volumes of other types, iSCSI, fiber channel, snapshot file volumes. In this case, we're going to just do new NAS volume. So we'll just select 10 gigs, something, something marginal. Now, if you're going to be, uh, you can always increase your NAS volume. So if you start off at a terabyte, you can increase it to up to 10 terabytes. You just click here. I'll show you and I'll go through that so that everybody understands. Because there seems to be a lot of questions about, well, how can I increase my NAS volume? Because you're, let's say you're growing in your NAS environment. You're adding more files, more unstructured data. So what you want to do is you see we've just created this new LV0010, which is our new NAS volume. And let's say we want to increase that down the road. You can do that. Uh, here we have 10 gig. Let's just go to LV0010. So here, if we just go down to the bottom here, you'll see LV0010. Now, we'll just add another 30 gigabytes, so that way it'll be a total of 40 gigabytes. So you'll see this LV0010 
expand from 10 gigabyte to 40 gigabyte. And there it is. So that's just something that we like to add is while we walk through the process, some of the certain things you can do uh, with the DSS V6 and or V7. Now once you created your NAS logical volume, what we need to do is create an SMB underscore log file. So if you just go right into configuration and NAS resources and then go to NAS shares, here's where you would create an SMB uh, share. Now let's say you didn't do it. Uh, so normally you would select SMB underscore log and then click on apply. And I'm not going to do this now because I want to show you something. You can go ahead and do this and then apply it, but we've had some customers accidentally try to go and start enabling the logging right away. And that does not work. So what you have to do is remember, if you go to configuration and NAS settings, and of course you can select your authentication methods of either internal or external lightweight directory access protocols or the PDC access or active directory services or a NIST server. Um, once you select that, then what you want to do is scroll on down and you will see enable logging. Now if I try to enable logging without creating the SMB share, and here it states it, to enable logging, please create share name called SMB underscore log, to which the log file will be written. If I do this without creating the SMB share, what will happen if I enable it, it won't enable it until you create that share. So here it stays checked because it knows that I have not created a share name called SMB log. So let's go ahead and create it. What we'll do is go back to configuration. We'll go to NAS resources, NAS shares, and then here we'll add the SMB underscore log and we want to use a default path of the new one we've created, LV0010. It could be in an existing NAS logical volume. Just because I created a new NAS logical volume doesn't mean that it has to. So if you have an existing NAS logical volume that's already created, such as you see as here, LV002, you can add it to that. I just wanted to show you fresh how simple it can be and how you can start off in the simplest manners. But you can add it to your existing NAS logical volumes. So let's click on Apply. Now you see the SMB log on the left and the share is available. Let's click on that share. And on the right side, you'll be able to see if we scroll down right here at SMB settings. Here we have by default on all DSS NAS logical volumes, they're set with users with passwords. The reason for this, we don't want to make a share available immediately uh, for others to put files in that could contain viruses or um, material that it should not be intended for so we lock it down with users with passwords and as you can see I don't have any users on the left side and I have a blank users group that's by default um, in this case just to make things simple you can just select guests with anyone without password and then once this is completed then you can go ahead and if you want to select the show advanced features uh, here there's a lot of functionality that you can uh, use in your share for SMB authentications where you can do inherent owners for the access control list, um, inherent permissions, locking and max uh, mapping of the access control list inherently. And if you need more definition, if you always click right here in the question mark, you don't always find more information about it. So here you can see uh, descriptive information for these specific functions, the inherent owner and so forth, and you can drill down into it and understand more in-depthly what each of these features provide. Okay, so once we created that, we want to make sure that we're going to go with guest user without password. We'll click apply. And then, of course, if you wanted to add users or create users, here we can just create a simple user. Uh, we'll call one open E. And we'll give it a simple password. And at which point the new user will be created on the left side. Once that user is created on the left side, then you can add that user to the specific shares uh, or the Samba underscore share log. And here in the share as well, you'll be able to select the user additionally. 
So just bear in mind that that is something it works either way. You can add groups to the share. If I were to go to SMB log and I wanted to scroll down, I can add open E and I can also add the groups, users and many other groups. So you can apply them for those users. But typically you don't want everybody to be able to access the SMB underscore log. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, is that you may want to apply some access control list uh, variables to this. So if you just click on shares, right up here on the left side, and you'll get the create new share where we were before. Um, here you can see that the NLV0010, the Samba log has been, share has been created. And therefore, you can go ahead and use the access control list. So if I were to go to LV002, uh, you can see that the Samba is not there. So what we want to do is we want to go to the LV0010. Now we go click once on the log, add the user, open E, hit apply, then go back to LV010, click on the share name, and go to access permissions. Now here's where you probably could set where, let's say this user, we would like for him to have read, write, execute, and apply for all subdirectories. This way they'll be able to access everything on there. Now so you don't want really everybody to be able to access this information um, unless there's an intended use for other administrators to uh, view that information. Therefore you would go back to the users, add certain users or groups. By default, if you just go to access permissions, you'll see that the open E user is in there. And of course he has read, write, and execute. If you select the user owner, you want to apply to all subdirectories and that allow that those users to be able to view the SMB log doc text file. And you know, before we go look at some of this, uh, there is a website I'll take you to right when we finish up looking at the, some of the uh, files from the SMB and I'll show you some the meanings that for the SMB audit and where you can search on the internet for more details. So now what I did was I created this also on another server is that here showing you I have it running. If we look here, let's see if I blow this up for you. Uh, here is the SMB share log similar to the one we just created. And here's the file. So it's really an SMB underscore audit.txt. Now if you notice it's 1.78 kilobytes. Well that's because I did some activities. I did some writes, I did some deletes, I did some copy moves. Um, here, if, what we'll do is we'll show you an example. If I go ahead and make some changes, let's say I go to the share called data, and I want to copy this folder called info, and I want to put it into a test share. Now you remember it was 1.78 for that Samba log. Now look how it grew. So it went from 1.78 to 2.45. Let's take a look at what the log file looks like. Um, I like to edit it with a word pad file. Um, it's easier to read. Here you could see a lot of information. Um, here I did some renames. Um, I did some writes. Um, I did some transfers. And here we, let's go down to the bottom. So it's recording each of the events that take place per file, per folder that's involved in that share. So here if we scroll down, what we did was we moved a lot of the folders into that test and we copied these files in here. So here is more information concerning. Now this will, concerning what we did, so it's going to track everything. Now let's say this gets really large, what you can do is make a copy of the SMB, place it in another directory or somewhere so you can further study, study it or keep it for your records, but you can go ahead and delete it because this will grow. And what you want to do is leave it at least one character in there. And then, of course, save the file. Now, if we look at it, and let's refresh, we see that the file is smaller. Let's watch it grow one more time. So if I were to take test, and I were to copy these files, and I were to put them into a new share, and we'll call this demo, open up the folder directory that we've created, copy the files in there. Now let's go back and see that the Samba log has grown, which it has. And let's take a look at it. So let's open it up with WordPad. 
and here you can see that we moved those files and we created a new folder and that new folder was called demo and these were the files that were written to in that folder that we created so this is really helpful for a lot of secured environments police stations uh, requested this and this is why we want to present this for everybody and additionally to this I wanted to show you that there is a site for greater details on this uh, if we go into just a regular Google search and you do SMB audit you know, the first page I receive is full audit for Samba so here is this virtually the same thing of the records that are complete uh, are basically they're recorded and then the complete set of the Samba VFS op operations are here and here you know, we did a lot of the things that you just saw they were the rights uh, here's the rights and renames that you see um, and so I present that to you and I wanted also to provide that in this set here so in case you're not familiar with all of them they are right here they're very easy to look up on the internet and be able to extract the information and basically present it to whoever your boss may be who may need the information as why that certain file and who moved that file and it records a name and documentation of it all accordingly to the SMB log file that you see well I hope this helps everybody and by the way keep in mind that uh, on our website we do have updates you can always verify the updates if you go to products open edssv7 and you can always check for the download trial this will give you information as to what version is the latest release so here the last version was in 2013 in april 12th and of course there's the build and update keep it up to date if you need any help contact support take care have a good day. See you next time.